Hey friends, I'm Sakai, and today I want to show you how to put together a Notion dashboard to help keep your team on track as you work through projects. Now, I work at an agency called MetaLab, and for all of our clients, we set up a Notion workspace where we keep pretty much everything that we need for a project. So that includes various spaces for design, engineering, product, various quick links, a shared space with the client, our tasks, and pretty much anything that you could think of that you might need in a project management tool. Before we jump in, if you want to get access to this Notion template, go ahead and hit the link to go to my Patreon, where I post all of my templates and working files for Notion, Figma, Webflow, and my code. All right. That said, let's jump in and let me show you a little bit about what we're going to do today. So what I want to build and walk you through is this right here. So uh, it's nothing too crazy, nothing too advanced, but it's just a workspace that I found has worked for our teams. It helps us stay organized and it helps keep things really nice and clean. So we have, you know, a general gallery, which kind of serves as the sort of links to all the main spaces. We have some quick links on the right here for everybody to access our tasks, and then a timeline of the project that's connected to these tasks so you can keep track of how you're doing in your various phases. So let's start from scratch. Here we're doing the Artemis redesign. Uh, I guess it didn't go so well. Maybe this joke is dated by the time this comes out, but we're gonna do an Artemis redesign. We're sending them to the moon and they need SIG branding. So yeah, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn this into a full width page, just so we have that uh, wide space to work with. And I'm gonna start by creating a two column layout. So you hit slash to open up the uh, blocks palette. I'm gonna type two column to get our two columns. And then the first thing we're gonna do here is add a gallery view. And we're gonna start with a new database. And this is gonna be called Project Spaces. Um, I like to hide the database title. Everybody has different opinions, but I think it helps it be a little bit cleaner. So all of these pages are essentially gonna contain the various areas of our product. So usually we have product, this is where, uh, you know, product decisions are made and we keep track of things like OKRs, business value, user value, feature planning, roadmaps, things like that. Then we have design where we keep anything that's sort of more specific to design. Engineering, I'd say that's pretty self-explanatory. And then uh, project management, which is where a lot of things like meeting recordings and anything that's a little bit more generic to project management will end up. We don't really need this created property. And just for the purposes of this, I'm also going to delete the tags property. We don't really need that either. And one thing I like to do to keep the project nice and clean and tidy and feeling kind of like an organized space rather than just like a simple Notion page is to create a set of custom on brand cover photos. And so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to create a frame. Uh, I'll just make it 1920 by 1080 and we'll call this uh, Notion cover. And I'll just grab this image that we're using as the cover here. I just copy that, paste that in here. We've got this beautiful uh, James Webb telescope image. I'm trying to find space for our text here, essentially. So maybe this. It's a little bit of a difficult image to use, actually. So maybe let's pull this into the right here. Make the background color of this the same kind of dark black. And then we'll put another frame. I'll just use this as sort of like a gradient and fill is going to be a linear gradient from left to right where the leftmost color is this and same for the right but at zero percent opacity okay and now we have this nice gentle fade and we have a little bit more space for our text what i usually like to do is i like to have the name of the project um, usually if we're working with a client we might have the actual logo of the client uh, but for now, we'll just go with this project title. And so we have the project name and then underneath that in larger font, we'll have the actual name of the section. So in this case, you know, it might be, um, we'll just do section name for now. And this is a column. I feel like this could be even larger. So we'll make that 160. And then we'll just pop that in the middle here. That's not too bad. So let's turn this into a component. And I'm just going to set this as a text prop. So this is going to be section name and from here we can kind of just duplicate this a bunch of times i know i have four sections and it's going to be product design engineering and project management so now we can just go ahead and export all of these we'll just do a png at 1x wait for it to export i'm just gonna put it on my desktop right now and then we'll go into each individual page add a cover change it upload and we're going to upload uh, the specific cover for each one of these, right? 
So now that we've uploaded all our covers for each of the individual pages, which you can see when you go into the page, what we want to do is go into our gallery view settings or our view options. And in the layout, we want to make the card preview the page cover. And then we want to make the card size uh, small. So everything is looking nice and clean. We've got our four on brand sections. And now in here, what I like to do is I like to go into my settings and in the layout, I'm going to change the default page opening to side peak, right? So I can open this on the side and then in the product, there will be a lot of different things. So, you know, there might be like a, a roadmap and a feature prioritization map and anything that's product related. I can just go in here, click on what I need and be done with it. So that's the first part of our dashboard. Now, the next part that we like to have is just a quick links section. And this is just going to house, as the name suggests, any quick links, anything that you need access to pretty often. So a lot of times these will be shared space, important links, the Google Drive, SOW, so like the statement of work, things like the project team. So who's on the team, who's responsible for what, when are their vacation times. So this is kind of the top section and I'm just going to go ahead and create a Kanban board. So we go ahead slash board create a new database. And this is going to be a very simple Kanban board um, that has project tasks in it. We kind of like to use the default ones. I think a lot of these default uh, progress trackers in Notion, at least since they added the new status property, uh, are really helpful. But obviously you can add more depending on the needs of your project. And we often do. Now let me go ahead and copy a bunch of tasks from somewhere else and paste all of these tasks that I've already created. Um, one thing I like to do, this is just like a personal visual thing, but if you go into the view options in the layout, you can color the columns and I don't know, I just think it looks nicer to have these colored columns. So each task will probably contain a bunch of information about the task, a little bit more context, some links. It may have, again, a status. It may have people that it's assigned to. And we'll see in a second, it'll also be tied to a different database. So that's pretty simple, just a place to manage tasks. And the next thing that we're going to do just underneath that is to create a timeline view, create a new database. And this is going to be our project timeline. In here, we may have different phases. So one thing you can do is split this into like sprint one, sprint two, sprint three. I'm going to delete these other properties for now. And instead of a status, I'm actually going to turn this into a phase and it's going to be uh, select. And then our options are actually going to be design, engineering, and maybe discovery. You know, you could have research in here, um, whatever you need based on your project. And then what you can do is add some more stuff. So let's go ahead and add another sprint one, another sprint two. We'll do one more sprint one just for good measure. It's going to be our engineering sprint. There's never been a single sprint of engineering in a project ever. So now we have our three discovery sprints, you know, our two design sprints, and then our one engineering sprint unheard of. Absolutely the, the most 10x engineers you've ever seen. And the reason I split those up into various phases is because now I can go in here and I can group these sprints by phase and then I can sort them based on the actual uh, order. So, you know, you'll start with discovery, go into design and then into engineering. So now we want to tie these sprints back to our tasks. And the way that we do that is using relations and eventually rollups. So let's go ahead and add a new property. And this is going to be a relation. And it's going to be a relation to project tasks and it's going to be a two-way relation so we're going to show it on project tasks and we'll call this um, sprint and we'll add the relation here perfect and essentially what that allows us to do is to just say okay so this goes here and i guess this one too and then in sprint two we're going to do some client workshops uh, lo-fi ideation we'll do foundational re research synthesis and foundational research So now that we have all of our tasks tied to a phase, we can go back here to our project tasks. And if we want, we can actually show that sprint. And now we see that each task is tied to a specific sprint. So now that we have all of our sprints tied to each of our tasks, we want to show a progress bar to show the actual progress of each of the sprints. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use this project task relations to create a rollup. So rollups allow us to grab information out of our relations. So in this case, we're going to roll up our relation from project tasks. And what we want is the status. And we want to show the percent per group of complete tasks. And then from there, we can select either a ring or a bar. I personally like the bar, but obviously it's up to personal preference. And we're going with this blue theme, so I'm going to make it blue. 
And last thing, I'm just gonna call this task progress bar. And so now what you can see is that as we go through the project and we start to complete these tasks, so I'm gonna move all of these into complete and maybe some of them are in progress and I'm kind of all over the place. I don't, projects won't usually look like this obviously, but you can see that our meters are actually filling up. And of course we actually wanna go into our properties and we wanna show that progress bar and you can see it here on the timeline. And of course, you know, if I start actually checking more of these off, you'll see that these bars will start to get filled. Somehow we're uh, halfway through sprint two, but also done with, you know, this like fourth sprint down here. So hopefully you can kind of see how the setup can help you and your team stay on track, but without overcomplicating things. I find that one of the major barriers to adoption is when your tools or your setups are a little bit too complicated and folks don't really want to keep up with the work. So we're keeping it really simple here. We have spaces for people to go and access the links that they need to. We have our quick links up top where anybody, even if they have no context about this workspace, can actually access these. Go to the client shared space, access you know quick links to Miro boards or anything like that, and all the information they need at a glance. And then further down, we have our project tasks where team can keep each other accountable and the project timeline, which helps everybody know where we're at in the process. How far are we into each sprint? How much longer do we have to complete things and so on. So hopefully that was helpful. I hope you learned something. And if you do like the video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. And if you do want access to this Notion template, go ahead and hit the link to my Patreon down below and you'll get access to two working files and two early access videos every month. And you'll also be supporting the channel and supporting me as I do this. But with that, hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy designing.